Welcome to the teaching and learning milieu. This is Jake, your director of studies, and we are here to talk about another interesting topic, which will help guide you towards your online learning development and at the same time for your English teaching and learning with your students. For today's topic, we have online learning. I understand the need for online learning especially for our students who can no longer be present at the moment at our schools. So we're bringing learning to their homes. As part of this discussion, we have to be aware of the understanding of change. And in order for change to actually work, it is really important to have the desire to adapt to that change, to be able to follow through, the time to accept that there will be some changes on how we manage our schedule and to also accept that responsibility of making sure that our time management skills is really being self-checked. Ideas will just come along in the way as we go through these process of change. And ideas are limitless, especially to the availability of internet connection and to the World Wide Web. And out of all of these concepts, we can be able to form habits out of our routine with that change that has come. It is really important to be able to create that habit. Our talking points for today will focus on the following things. We begin with online learning in a nutshell, the tools for online learning, our general guidelines that we need to follow as we go through our step-by-step -step process for online learning. And we also have our class management online, meaning to say, how do we manage our students while they're working online? That will be another challenge, a deal breaker for all of us. And last but not the least, we will inform you of your extended resources that you can make use of to support you with your online learning experience. I hope you're ready and let's begin. In a nutshell, it begins with the planning. It's very important to plan ahead, especially your lessons, to be able to create and curate or design activities where students will become engaged and therefore they will still be adapted to learning even though they are at home. The next part is identifying the online tool. What are these resources that we can use? It's also important that you study, make use of them, practice, and allow yourself to make mistakes somewhere right there in the middle. Because by making mistakes, we can only learn uh, so much out of it. We believe that out of these failures, this trial and error, we can do so much better. So don't be afraid in making mistakes. And getting students on board will also be very challenging, especially when your students are not digitally inclined. I know most of them really are fun of using their gadgets, but, but most of the time, the challenging part is to hook them for educational online platforms, such as Google Classroom or Class Dojo. So to be able to do that, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of support coming from the parents. So as early as now, we encourage you to bring it on and try your very best to go on board with your students. And the next part that we have to go through is the production stage, wherein all of these preparations that you've made will be put to good use. Meaning to say, this is the time that you will start creating your lessons. Perhaps if you are already well versed with it, you can now creating your modules and therefore your schedule is as planned in connection to your syllabus or in connection to the things that you would like your students to carry out as part of their student outcomes. And then this is, you know, the reality of things. 
the only thing that most people who are working outside of your online learning platform is the tip of the iceberg and that's the output whether or not you succeeded with your online learning we can only check it out of the students performances out of their engagement now what are the qualities that we need to become if not the best a good online teacher the first thing is your passion to teach this is not a different kind of thing as to the face-to-face -face learning environment the only thing that changed is the platform wherein the face-to-face -face environment has transformed to a virtual environment you cannot touch your students you cannot physically you know come closer to your students but they can only feel that passion for teaching the moment you curate or create these activities for them and the moment you start your live classes they will begin to become more connected to you as if they're just using their facebook accounts and their TikToks, maybe or things like that another important thing is your patience it will take a lot of your patience correct me if i'm wrong you are already having a hard time managing your students inside the classroom what more if you cannot physically come closer to them what more if it's a virtual class so your patience takes a lot of importance right here so don't shout as much as possible especially in the live classroom smile with them laugh with them and lead them as to how you would like it to be directed in your face-to-face -face classroom again you are still the teacher so you have the full control as to what's going to happen in your online or virtual classrooms the next part is flexibility flexibility comes in different forms but let's just simplify it let's say for example there will be moments that the specific tool will not be available due to some time constraints or maybe due to some technical requirement then it's important that you are flexible enough to find another resource or be patient enough to research and learn more about the resource that you are using and finally your problem solving skills will be challenged because most of the time there will be some technical glitches do not panic it is part of the learning curve so in the event that you're having some issues you can troubleshoot by checking online or you can always ask help from your co-teachers from your line managers or from anyone whom you feel are very much acquainted to online learning here are the following tools that we would like to, to discover to be familiar of and at the same time to try and use for our basic web 2.0 tools to web 2.0 tools have begun since 1999 and most of the educators have studied on how to make use of them in the classrooms whether it be a blended learning classroom or an online learning classroom so the following things are class dojo we encourage our pre-kid one to kid four classes to make use of them the google classroom for our kid five to GEP classes including AEP classes of course we also would like to highlight other uh, language centers such as the CSL program and the TSL program we also have an additional feature which is Google Meet for live online classes so when you're ready and confident to try meeting your students on a live classroom environment you can make use of google meet if you think google meet will be a bit challenging because of the use of a gmail accounts you can make use of zoom that will be another online platform that you can make use of we also have the following support apps and these are only examples you can try as many other resources as possible to link with these three main web 
resources. We have quizzes or Kahoot, Padlet, PictoChart or Canva, Telegram, Facebook, or Messenger. Now let's move on to the general guidelines on how to make our online teaching and learning successful. The first one is to meet the technical requirements. Well, basic technical requirements are as follows. You need to have a laptop or computer. If both are not available, then we can settle with a smartphone. But there are some limitations with the use of smartphone. You know, some features are not available yet with the smartphone. So we encourage you to make use of a laptop or a computer. Therefore, if you will be using these things, it is important to have a stable internet connection will do. Just be patient with it. And the next one is to download the apps whenever necessary. So let's say you will be using Google Classroom. It's better to have the application on your phone. The next step is to prepare the lessons in advance. What do we mean by preparing the lessons in advance? You're still conducting classes. The only change is that the platform is different. It will be done virtually and you will be their teacher in that online learning platform. So it's important to manage your time very well. In the first hour in the morning, you start preparing your uh, lessons, searching for possible resources that you can make use of as part of your lesson. And then the next part could be meeting your students, maybe 15 to 30 minutes for a live class. And the last few minutes will be provided for explaining your classworks or homeworks that you provided for them via Google Classroom or perhaps Class Dojo. The next thing to do is to schedule the activities properly. So I've mentioned that earlier. It's really important to divide your time accordingly. And don't forget the five E's of lesson planning, wherein you have to engage, you have to explore, you have to explain, you have to expand, and at the same time, you have to make some evaluation out of that uh, lesson online. We don't mean to say that you have to cover all of it in one sitting. Perhaps you can divide them accordingly, depending on the time that you have. Another important thing that we have to consider is your creativity and resourcefulness. So nowhere to search. In my case, I make use of Google as my search bar. As a good search engine, you just type the question or the keyword and automatically it will pop up a lot of resources. Now, in terms of your critical thinking skills, it's important to take note whether these information are valid, truthful, and of course, related to your lesson. When we say meaningful content, do not just find a content just because you feel you like it, but always consider practicality for your students. Will my students understand it? Will my student get an overview of what I'd like them to absorb as part of my lesson? Or will my students appreciate that kind of video that I presented with them? So try to put yourself in the shoes of your students. I know that's a lot to consider, but that's part of what we signed up for as teachers. And don't give up. Again, if you make some errors right there in the middle, accept that you make some mistakes and try to correct them as soon as possible. The last general guideline that we would like to provide with you is to have a solid online class rules and routines. You are still managing students right here. So it's important to build rapport at the very start. Allow them to have five minutes or even up to 10 minutes to talk with one another as part of your communicative task, as part of building rapport, especially when you're doing live class through Google Meet or through Zoom application. After that, make sure that they understand the set of rules that you provided them. These set of rules doesn't have to be very complicated to make sure that they are on mute so that you are the only ones talking. And if they have some questions, make use of the chat box 
or you can unmute them and they can start sharing their questions with you. So it's really important that you have this set of rules to be able to go through with a successful online class. Develop routines will just follow through. So when they understand these rules, they can be able to develop a very good set of routines that could be part of their day-to-day -day activity. And if it's part of their routine, it's now easier to make it a habit. Now, we don't know as to how long we will be working with an online learning, but the world is changing. Basically, as many resources that we can make use of that could benefit our students, it's really great to try it out and to see whether it's working. And for a blended learning environment, you can make use of these resources. Let's say, for example, assigning homeworks, managing their grades. You can make use of Google Classroom or reminding the parents or making announcements. You can make use as well of the Class Dojo. So there's a lot of benefits. I know there will be challenges right there in the middle, but it's important to be more accepting, be more open-minded, and again, to accept that we're not perfect, we can make some mistakes in the middle, and we're right here to correct them. How do we manage our online class? Here are a few tips. First is to designate your time accordingly. So again, divide your time accordingly. Give a variety of classwork or online tasks. Variety means not all the time sharing videos and videos and videos. Not all the time sharing quiz, quiz, quiz. It's important to change that so that students will be engaged. And as we all know, their attention span is very limited. So it's really good to put it into chunks and do not bombard them or do not give them several tasks big tasks that they cannot finish on a certain period of time. You're just frustrating yourself and your students as well. Prepare a set of rules for a live class. So if it's a live class, it's really important to do that. Like mentioned earlier, make sure that these set of rules are clear with them and be firm with your rules. The moment that any of these rules perhaps is violated, then go ahead do the precautionary measures that you have informed them and therefore it makes you the teacher who has the control of the live class another thing to consider is to make your online lessons short meaningful and engaging and lastly provide extended resources for students independent learning this is where their own problem solving skills their own critical thinking and their own collaboration skills will come into play. Extended resources would mean giving them an additional task that they can do perhaps for an extended period of time. Submissions can be maybe after a few days, maybe two to three days, so that they can immerse themselves into learning on their own. I know this might be something very new. If you have an idea about flip classroom activity, that is one of the main roles of flip classroom activity to provide independence to the students in terms of their learning. And last but not the least, for our topic for today, we have these extended resources that you can make use of. For AI Language Center, all of our teachers who are member of the Educational G Suit account have access to the Teacher Resource Center. And the Teacher Resource Center is in the Google Drive. And these resources can be digitized, meaning to say can be uploaded, downloaded, and shared online. Make sure that you are familiar as to where these resources are located. So give it time to become familiar to it and dedicate a little bit of portion right there to go through with them. And in the event that you might be looking for more, don't hesitate to inform your line manager so that we can look for additional resources for you. Another way is the teacher website. There are resources for teachers that are available for you. And these are outside references, meaning to say these are found online, readily available for you 
to check and download. Another extended resource is the use of Google as a search engine and the additional Google apps such as Google Calendar, Google Forms, and Google Docs or Google Slides perhaps. For Google Forms, it's very efficient to create multiple choice uh, homeworks or quizzes because automatically it will be checked by Google Form and therefore it can be linked to your Google Classroom. For our next session, we will be teaching you more on how to maximize the use of Google Forms and at the same time on how to create digital homeworks or uh, digital worksheets for your students. And the last but not the least, which is very popular to most of young learners, is of course the use of YouTube. And if you are an ESL teacher who is very resourceful, I know you are. I know you've been doing this for a lot of years now. You can check any ESL channel or website and these websites provide variety of videos, tutorials, activities, and worksheets that you can share, download, and be made available as a digital resource. So the possibilities here are endless, but the only thing that will stop you is that apprehension. It's normal, but again, to be able to move forward, we have to give it a try. There you have it. We have concluded this episode for online learning and hopefully you can be able to start and continue doing a great job with your dedication to teach the students to learn the language, whether it is English, Chinese, Thai or Korean, whatever language it is that is available, hopefully you can be able to share the knowledge that you wanted your students to absorb or to get.